This is the Motorola X40, the phone that's launched in global markets as the Edge 40 Pro and in the US as the Motorola Edge Plus with one tweak. Now sporting a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, a compact and handy design, all at a very competitive price, this Motorola phone is one of the most awaited launches of 2023 despite Motorola's spotty track record. So in today's video, let's unbox and take a close look at what Motorola have done this time. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's get started. So this is the box the Motorola X40 comes in. I like the subtle Moto up top. Barring that, it's typical Motorola, nothing we've not seen in the past. Let's now go ahead and open up the box. Once we do so, we are greeted by the X40 itself, removing it from its protective cover. Now this is the black variant that I've managed to get my hands on. The X40, it's also available in blue. Now anyways, let me go ahead and turn the phone on and set it aside for the moment. And as the phone boots up, let's get to what else is in the box. Now this insert, it contains your regular information leaflets and also a soft TPU case. Now this, of course, adds to the grip, protects the phone from scratches, yada, yada, yada. We then have a USB Type-C to Type-C cable, which is followed by a 125 watt turbo charger. Yay, charger in the box. Great, right? Now Motorola's claim is that you can charge the 4600 milliamp hour battery on this one from zero to 50 in just six minutes and get a full charge in 23. That's excellent charging times, though the 4600 milliamp hour battery capacity does give me some pause, it feels a little too little. Now this is one stat that's been changed for the US launch. The Motorola Edge Plus is pretty much the same phone, but it comes with a 5100 milliamp hour battery charging speeds lower to 68 watts. The wireless charging speeds, like everything else, that remains consistent across models at 15 watts with five watt reverse wireless. Now the Edge 40 Pro, it's not really a small phone. It's got a 6.67 inch display. It weighs in at around 200 grams, but it does manage to feel very compact in hand. Now, the reason for this is because the display, it curves at both the edges. Well, it actually curves on all four sides. We've got steep curves to the left and right and subtle curves at the top and bottom. Now this curve at the edges, that's ensured that this phone is just 74 millimeters wide. Now for relevance, the S23 Plus, which sports a smaller 6.6 inch display, that's 76.2 millimeters wide. So this motor feels surprisingly narrow. Add to it, the back also curves at the edges. So there's a very little bit of this thin metal frame that's in contact with the palm of your hand. So it feels sleeker than it's supposed to be, than it actually is. Now that said, this is still a phone with a glass back. And as with all glass back phones, it's slippery AF. But for what it's worth, Motorola have gone with Gorilla Glass Victus for this back with a matte finish, which makes the back totally smudge and fingerprint resistant. Like throughout the time spent shooting this video, the back, it remained clean. Now when you look close, you can see this back has a shimmery finish to it. It's pretty subtle. Now even the other color option, the blue, it feels pretty mundane. So if you are looking for a phone that kind of screams for attention, neither of these SKUs are gonna give you that. But not everyone wants a phone with a back that looks like a unicorn puked on it. So if you aren't one of those people, you're gonna love this. Also note, this time Motorola has gone with an IP68 water and dust resistance rating for this phone. Now circling back to the display, this again is covered by Corning's Gorilla Glass Victus. The resolution is Full HD+. Now what's special about this panel is the fact that the refresh rate is 165 hertz, something that's usually only reserved for gaming phones. But here, given the 165Hz refresh and the solid flagship SoC underneath, the phone feels super responsive. Now do note that there is no LTPO support, though you can choose between 60, 120 and 165Hz refresh options manually. Now here's where I wanna point out that when you set things on auto, 165Hz never gets triggered, which definitely feels like a bummer to me. This display BT dub tops out at 1300 nits, so it's perfectly usable outdoors under direct sunlight. Now, under the display sits an optical fingerprint scanner, pretty fast and accurate, we've seen this before. Now, the other biometric option, that's via this selfie camera in this hole punch right up top, face unlock. The camera itself is a 60 megapixel sensor. Selfies themselves turned out nice, they are pixel bent down to 15 megapixels. Now, you've seen how sleek this phone is. And it's this sleekness that actually hurts it when it comes to sustained performance. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 on the inside does throttle a little too quick for my liking. Now, when I'm trying to run something like the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme stress test, it dropped to 50% of its performance after just 10 to 12 minutes. Now, this isn't too uncommon with sleek flagships, but at the same time, it is still worth keeping in mind that if gaming is of utmost priority to you, you really shouldn't be looking at this phone. Now, that apart, the spec sheet remains impressive. Now, in China, as the X40, 
you get to choose between 8 or 12 gigs of LPDDR5X RAM, 128, 256 or 512 gigs of UFS 3.1 or UFS 4.0 storage. The H40 Pro in Europe, it's available only as 12, 256 or 12, 512. But as the H Plus in the US, they're selling it only in 8, 512. That's a weird skew to go for, right? Either go with a maxed out RAM or lowest RAM and lowest storage, maxed out RAM, maxed out storage, 8, 512. Seems odd, doesn't it? Anyways, the flagship chip on the inside results in the user experience being quite awesome. Now since what I have is the Chinese unit, it came with my UI 5.0 out of the box, my UI 5.0, which happens to be built on top of Android 13. Now the global versions will as always be much closer to stock. That said, even with my UI, the phone felt very responsive. Moto's regular features like chop chop to turn the flashlight on or off, or just double twisting to quickly launch the cameras, or the same gesture to flip between the front and back cameras, the peak display, all these are present and accounted for. Moto less ready for functionality is also available. This gives you wireless options to cast your TV and have a proper interface for it. You can also have wired output to a larger screen since the USB Type-C port here, it's USB 3.2 and supports DisplayPort out. Now, Motorola's update track record has been spotty at best, so take this with a grain of salt. For what it's worth, Motorola is promising three Android version updates and four years of security patches for this phone. Seems good on paper, but like I said, take it with a big, huge chunk of salt. Okay, let's now move on to optics. We have a triple camera set up to the back. The primary is a 50 megapixel sensor paired with an f1.8 lens that's optically stabilized. Images seem pretty good. Natural color is ample detail. The secondary, that's yet another 50 megapixel sensor. This one's paired with an f2.2 ultra wide. It's got a 114 degree field of view and also autofocus. So it pulls double duty as a macro shooter. The third camera is a 12 megapixel sensor paired with an f1.6 lens that allows for 2x optical zoom. Now, Moto is not really looking at it as a zoom camera, but rather it is supposed to help you get these kind of portrait shots. Now, the H40 Pro can shoot up to 8K video and the footage seems pretty nice, detailed with good dynamic range. On the software front, regular photo modes like spot color and dual capture are all present and accounted for here. Now, as far as pricing goes, in Europe, the 12256, it's been priced at 900 euros, but in China, the phone launched at 3399 RMB, which converts to around 490 US dollars or 40,000 Indian rupees, and that price seems a lot more reasonable. So what do you think about the X40 or the H40 Pro or whatever it is they decide to call this phone? What do you think about it? Are you impressed? Do you like seeing a phone like this at this price point? At the Chinese price, we're not talking about the European price, of course. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, we are at the end of today's quick little unboxing and hands-on. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks for your time, thanks for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash, you've been watching C4 Retech, and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day, bye-bye.